Hey guys, Mr. Marcus here, and as you can see, we're back with the Mass Elite Crystal Palace one. And as you can see from the club doctor staff report, Castanos has suffered an injury during a match. He should be back at some point during March. Now, we're in March at the current moment, so he's only out for like a week or a couple weeks. But it means that the next two games we won't be able to play him, and he is like our top goal scorer, our top everything. Without him, we sort of have to play one of our backup strikers, so that's either Patrick Bamford. John Guidetti or Connor Wickham. Now, this is really annoying because he is like one of my best players, but it was expected that it would come at one point in this season that I would suffer an injury for a player who I sort of really needed in this team. So like at the start of the season it was Kabai, he was out for like three weeks. This time now he's out for well, Castanos is now out for like potentially only two weeks, but those two weeks could potentially be the end of something considering that we're like what third no oh, second in the table one point behind Chelsea if we win our next three games we could potentially go above them but hey ho there's not really much I can do in that so with that being said today's episode we have three matches for you as usual I have confirmed myself in terms of editing that there is only going to be three more match three more episodes left so this episode and then two more so the next episode is the penultimate one and then the episode after that will be the final episode of the first season of my Crystal Palace Master League where we go all the way into the next season and then you'll see what happens. So yeah and then I'll sort of make the changes according, the, any according changes will be made for the second season come the start of the second season. So anyway the first match of this episode we face off against Norwich City and we have to play Pat we play playing Patrick Bamford up front just to see if we could potentially play with someone a little bit different. Messing about potentially moving Zaha up forward a little bit more, but I was like, no, I'll leave it. Patrick Bamford should be able to do something decent up front because he whenever he came came in to actually do something, he actually has done something decent. Like in the, his first couple games he did score a goal. So I wasn't expecting like anything mind blowing from him, but last but I mean it was pretty decent, but Last time we faced off against um, Norwich, we did score an amazingly good goal with uh, with ya Yannick Galassi, with um, Johan Kabai, like a goal from like 35 yards, like potentially John Ruddy's mistake, but hey ho, I'm always going to take goals when I score from long range in this game. So, with that being said, the game kicked off, of course, they played, as you'd expect, very quick football going forward. And in the 18th minute of the match, Redmond on the ball plays into Jerome, back to Redmond, Redmond gets a strike away and goes just wide of the post. About 10 minutes later, Kabai on the ball this time plays a ridiculously nice through ball through to Wilfred Zaha down the right hand side. Zaha takes, basically controls it, crosses it into Patrick Bamford who heads it into the back of the net. He gives a 1 0 lead, and I was like, yes, I put the faith in you, and you came up and actually scored a goal for me. But in the 34th minute of the match here, they get an opportunity with Zakarenko. He hits it just wide, and then. In the 36th minute, after a really nice little play down his left hand side, down the right hand side, Joel Ward gets the opportunity, crosses it in a low cross into Balassi. Balassi ends up hitting it wide like an absolute fool. And in the 54th minute of the match, after really poor defending from us, Tete gets a strike away, hits off the hits off the post, and it comes into Wes Hulhan, and Wes Hulhan pops him back in the net, equalised roughly in the 55th minute of the match. And I was like, okay, under a bit more pressure, potentially should come back here and just win the game. But in the 63rd minute of the match, really poor defending from me. Wes Hulahan picks up the ball, plays it into the Redmond. Redmond gets just nearly gets a strike away, but the referee gives a penalty for that. I get the ball of Soiree, I get the ball of everyone, I get the ball as you'd expect, but the referee gives the penalty, and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. So with a penalty given for that, which it, I don't know what the foul even is, um Ojadada Ofo took it and he hits it wide. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna maybe have to bring this back a little bit. So in the 68th minute, basically from the resulting from the result of that, I went forward, got a corner kick, and James McCarfer, General James McCarfer, ends up heading into the back of the net to make it 2-1 to us with about 20 minutes left. So in the in the 78th minute of the match, a really poor clearing header from Mycon, literally does nothing, comes out to uh, Zakarenko. He plays it into Wes Hulahan, Hulahan plays it into Kyle Lafferty and Lafferty pings it in the back of the net all via the post to give to equalise the last minutes of the match for Norwich City and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. As we end up losing, well we end up drawing the game 2-2 against Norwich having just lost our best player, well not our best player but our best player for like two games. We just could not do anything against Norwich as they actually probably deserve to win the match. So with that being said, Castanios actually came back into this game against Aston Villa and I was like okay this should be easy let's go and let's just go on with it so I thought he was going to be out for like, he was he was technically out for two weeks but the game against Norwich was like three like four days after that match against 
but four days after the report and then this month this was like a good like week there was like a week gap where the capital one cup semi-final would have been so technically it was two weeks but in the game time it was only one game essentially well luckily for me so going into the game against Aston Villa knowing that I just sort of had to continue winning the games I was not expecting this Aston Villa side to sort of have this sort of a game to be honest so playing in the in the rain as usual as we do at Selhurst Park the game kicked off as you'd expect and I was like okay I've got my good players back up playing some Carrasco playing someone a bit different here and there but in the 26th minute of the match here Adama Traore gets a strike away it's a really good strike just wide of the post and from the 27th minute I do a ridiculous mistake Rudy Gestead gets the opportunity gets a strike away and for some reason it just goes straight through Jack Butland and it was my mistake with my on the left hand side and I was really annoyed but I was like okay fair enough they can score with Gestead I don't really care I can probably get four and score a goal but in the basically coming up to the halfway mark, Belassi gets an opportunity, runs past a couple of players, now he gets a strike away, they clear the ball and the referee blows off the half time whistle, so 1 0 to Aston Villa at half time. And I was like, they actually deserve to be at winning at half time. But in the 58th minute, they score the most ridiculous goal I've ever conceded as they play a long ball to Rudy Gestead from an offside decision. He sort of chests it down past Mycon and just volleys it in the back of the net from the edge of the box. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. So. In the 61st minute of the match, I make a really poor tackle with Johan Kabai. I have no clue why he went with his right foot if he just swings his left foot round. He gets the ball, but I make a really bad tackle with him. He was already on a yellow card, and the referee gives up a straight red card. Well, a second yellow card to Johan Kabai to basically more or less confirm that we were going to just be destroyed. So, with that, with a sub suspension impending for Kabai, I do get an opportunity with Fisher score a goal to make it 2-1 to Aston Villa. And I was like, okay, we could potentially come back, maybe get another goal, maybe equalise and potentially go into the final minutes with like an ability to actually maybe even win the game. And Castanos does get the opportunity in the 78th minute. I do miss the opportunity. In the last minutes of the match, Fisher does get an opportunity, gives it to Balassi. Balassi gets the strike away. Really good save from Brad Guzan. From the Zoltan corner kick kind of came to nothing and then they just do really good defending and they clear the ball to Scott Sinclair. And we lose the second game of this episode 2-1. Having drawn the first game 2-2 and then drawn, losing the second game. In the game which was very close but we probably deserve to lose. Really good stag up man of the match. We go into the last game of the episode against Chelsea. Away from home without Johan Kabai. Now going into this game it was just after the international week so the likes of Chan had to play, we didn't have anyone going forward so I decided to play John Guidetti up front and Castanos in the attacking midfield role behind him gave um, Joel Ward the captaincy, played him at left back because Suari would be playing, would have been playing for whoever, whatever national team. And I had to like put a lot of youngsters on the bench, the likes of Carrasco and Wickham and New High and stuff like that because all my players were basically dead. And I was like, okay, this is going to make it a little bit more difficult considering that Chelsea were basically playing their strongest team as usual. And it was going to be hard at Stamford Bridge. So, of course, on a, on a day when it was pouring with rain as well, it doesn't really help. So with that being said, Chelsea, of course, playing John Terry as a captain, Gary Cahill, Courtois, Pichet. I mean, it was ridiculously how strong a team is, but I was sort of cautious because I was like, well, how the hell are they playing a strong team after an international week when they should technically not have a strong team because of the fact that their players should be like half dead as well. So when I looked at their, I don't remember if, I, if you can actually see their stamina because I'm going to see it in a moment. So I'd be, I'd be curious to see their stamina. Their stamina was like 100%. So I was like, how the hell is that? Like that they after an international week their, their players are basically like 100% stamina. But in the 15th minute of the match, they get a free kick. Oscar takes a free kick, ridiculously easy free kick for Butlin just to grab. It takes a massive deflection to be honest, and it goes into the uh, it wasn't going back and it goes straight to his hand. And from that we were like trying to get forward, knowing that we could potentially win the game against uh, against harder opposition. And in the 18th minute of the match, a really nice ball down the right hand side to Wilfred Zaha. Zaha takes a couple of touches, passes Pilkwell, gives it back to uh, Martin Kelly. Kelly crosses it into Balassi. Balassi tries header, it doesn't come to anything. Joel Ward does come out to it, probably should have just volleyed it first time, don't know why I said to pass the ball. Kelly picks it up again down his right hand side, gives it into Camacho. Camacho gives it into Guidetti. Guidetti gives it into Balassi. Balassi tries to give it back to Guidetti, comes up to Castanos, and Castanos pins it into back of net to make it 1 0 to us against Chelsea. Pass Courtois. A really nice goal right to the top corner. Nothing Courtois could have potentially even done about it. And at half time, as you can see here, like we were basically getting some opportunities there, here and there and everywhere. Like sort of giving them like sort of some sort of form of trouble as like we're sort of 
pepper in their box with the opportunity. Eventually, Balassi does pick it up, plays it into uh, Joel Ward down his left hand side, runs past William, and then eventually crosses it in with his left foot. Comes to nothing, and then eventually Castanios heads it down to Camacho. Camacho gives it back to Joel Ward. Joel Ward just waits, runs for a little bit, tries to get a strike away. William clears it, and the referee blows the half time whistle. So 1 0 to us at half time, keeping a good clean sheet against the likes of Diego Costa. But to be honest, Chelsea never seemed to really form any threat going forward, to be honest. And in the 55th minute, they get an opportunity. Blassi hit it just wide. 88th minute, Mikel down the right hand side doesn't really even cross it or anything, just sort of does a uh, he eventually crosses it, I mean, it's a, like, ridiculously easy to defend against. And then in the last minutes of the match, Fabregas on the ball, Camacho comes sliding through him to get a yellow card. And then from the resulting free kick, he comes to nothing. We clear the ball and the referee blows a final whistle. So we get beat by Aston Villa, draw against Norwich, but we can beat Chelsea. This game sometimes, I mean, the game was ridiculously boring. There was only three shots in the game. Castanio's got man match of a 7.0 rating. And as you see from our results, Arsenal got beat by Tottenham. We beat, well, Aston Villa beat Leicester, Everton beat Bour Bournemouth, Man United drew, and we're top of the table. But two, there are two points between top four places. Top three are all joint on the same place, but we're top on goal difference. So if you have enjoyed this video, subscribe my channel for more, and catch you later.